Hey everyone and welcome. In this guide, you're going to learn how you can carry your team like the pro player, Hiko. This will involve knowing exactly how you entry frag on attack, take control of the map, and push the enemy without getting yourself killed. Not only that, but we'll also be teaching you how to play from the defender side, where you'll learn how to properly use your abilities to stop 5-man rushes and tricks to holding sights down. So let's jump straight into it with Hiko playing on the newest map Ascent, starting on the attacking side. The first thing we want to point out is how important mid control is on the map Ascent. If you don't go through mid, then both A and B sites only have one entrance into the site, which is a tight funnel and easy for the enemy to hold. By getting control of mid as attackers, you give yourself more room to work with and other paths to take into bomb sites, not to mention that you can potentially cut off the defender's rotations as well. Now it's worth noting that Hiko is not playing with a 5 stack, he's only dual queuing with one other player, which is the Reyna on his team, so it's not exactly that his teammates will be super coordinated this match. Still, if we look at the minimap, we can see fairly standard positions. They have one on B, one mid, two top of mid, and one A. This is the most popular strategy among pros right now for attack. You essentially want one player on each side of the map, watching for potential pushes from the defenders, while three teammates work together to gain control of mid. Usually the formation is two mid and only one top of mid, but hey, it's solo queue, and you're never going to get perfect teammates. So Hiko starts the round by dry peeking into catwalk. A dry peek is just when you peek without using a flash or any kind of ability to help you get an advantage in the peek. Take note though of how he didn't wide swing like many players would have. He's holding a tight angle on the corner so he's only exposing a small amount of himself. He spots the enemy omen behind the box at catwalk, takes a few shots, calls him out to his team, and moves behind cover. Now we see a great example of how to peek with your abilities. He throws Race's grenade on the catwalk so that it prevents the enemy omen from being able to peek. He then moves into mid off of this timing. This can be used with almost every single agent in Valorant. Sage can throw a slow in this scenario, Phoenix can flash, Jack can smoke, you get the idea. Every agent has access to an ability that you can time your peek with. Now one of the biggest issues with Ascent is how you have to move to get control of mid. You can get shot from two separate angles, both catwalk and arches. This is why it's so important to call for some form of utility or smokes to come down on at least one of these areas. The standard play right now is for Brimstone to throw down two smokes, one on arches and one on catwalk. This then gives your team time to move into the mid and take control of it by the time the smokes expire, instead of just dry peeking into a bunch of different angles as you try to move into mid. Next, we have one of the best examples of how to take control gunfights and isolate enemies into 1v1s. In this position, if Hiko pushes into arches, he'll have three main angles to worry about. To his close right, to his close left, and directly in front of him. However, there's currently a brimstone smoke in front of him, so he first places the boom bot to go up the stairs to deny the enemy angle in the middle. Then, he hugs the corner and turns close left. This means the smoke behind him is protecting him from any enemies to his close right since they won't be able to see him. This is how you want to be viewing engagements in Valor. Analyze the potential angles enemies can be at, then look to only peek one of those angles at a time. He then gets the kill on Breach and manages to pick up his ghost. This is also one of the benefits of going with the classic pistol and light armor buy on the pistol round. If a ghost user dies, then you can pick up both their pistol and suddenly you have both armor and a more powerful weapon for the round. Alright, let's go back just a little bit. After Hiko places the boom bot, take note of how he hears gunshots from Market. Then he kills Breach, and again, you hear gunshots shooting at the boom bot from Market. Immediately after, we see our Sage get a kill on the enemy in Market. Now, here we want to test you on your game sense. Is the enemy that Sage killed the one that shot our boom bot in Market? Or is there a second enemy alive still in there? Well, let's find out. Hiko Satchel jumps to peak Market, and there is in fact an enemy left in there that kills him. Okay, so how did Hiko know that there was an enemy left in market? Well, if we go back, we heard gunshots at our boom bot in market. Then immediately after our sage kills an enemy in market. There's simply no way for an enemy to go all the way from the right side of market and kill the boom bot, and then manage to go back to the left side that fast. This is how deeper knowledge of the map, along with paying attention to your minimap, can essentially leave you with wall hacks. Now, I know some of you are wondering, what the heck is Hiko doing when he used his satchel to peek the enemy in market? Well. This is an advanced trick on race where you can use your satchel to boost yourself into a peak. Here's why this works. If you normally peek someone, the speed in which you peek them is restricted based on your movement speed. However, when you get boosted by your satchel, you move much faster than your movement speed, causing you to peek faster. Now here's the trick. Once you hit the ground, you actually come to a standstill at practically the same speed as if you were just running. This is something unique to Valorant, but essentially, you don't carry a lot of momentum when you hit the ground. And no matter how fast you're going, you come to a standstill really fast, meaning that you can peek faster than normal, but then you can get to standing still accuracy to shoot the enemy just as fast as if you had peeked them normally. By getting control of mid, getting a kill, and keeping in mind that although he died, he did get information on where the enemy was playing. Hiko's team still ended up winning the round. 
Looking into the start of the second round, focusing on economy, Hiko prioritizes buying heavy armor, full utility, and a marshal. The marshal is a super underrated buy right now. On the second round, it's dirt cheap at only 1100 credits. It will one-shot enemies to the body if they do not have armor. The enemy most likely won't have armor since they have to save after losing round 1. In addition to this, since mid control is so important on ascent, this marshal will help him peak catwalk, which is pretty far away. Again, we see the standard brimstone smokes come down to allow Hiko and his team to safely push into mid again and gain control of it. He then gets hit by the enemy's omen paranoia from catwalk. A nice trick to remember is that whenever an enemy uses a utility like this or a flash, it often means that they are going to peek with it. This is why he instantly runs for cover and calls out to his team that omen might peek, resulting in them getting a pick on the omen. Now, we can see with mid control gained that they look to use it to push catwalk towards tree room. He then makes sure to play off his Silva who's looking to entry frag. He hears gunshots to his right and knows someone is there. He peeks them and lands a no scope with the marshal. No scoping with the marshal is actually super viable since it's almost perfectly accurate. If we go back, we can see that when Silva took the fight, we saw two enemies on the minimap with Silva killing one of them. This lets Hiko know that there is still at least one enemy left in tree room. It also shows why it's so important to be checking your minimap, especially when a gunfight goes down that you can't participate in. Then we get a great lesson in how to push into a new area of the map, making sure to check for any enemies hiding close in corners before moving in further. Sage interrupts Hiko's clearing of corners in tree room and engages him by dueling with standard pistols and strafe shooting. Take note of how both players are only using right clicks with the classic pistol. In such close ranges, the classic pistol right click acts as a shotgun where its accuracy isn't impacted by moving. In these close quarter battles, it allows you to move around and be harder to hit, while looking for the right click one shot to the head. After Sage dies, there's only one enemy left. A great trick to remember when you outnumber the enemy is to look to group together with a teammate. This prevents the last enemy from killing you one by one and sets up for a trade kill if your teammate does indeed die. Now diving into round 3. In the beginning of round 3, Hiko elects to stay with the same loadout with the Marshal and full raise abilities. Typically, you'd want to upgrade so that you're synced with your teammates buys as they've all upgraded this round. However, one solo queue trick is to sit on your previous gun and then wait for your teammate to die or get a kill and then pick up one of their guns as an upgrade. Hiko immediately pulls out his raise nade to clear out catwalk push the enemy off the angle, and giving him a timing window to move into mid. However, he's then stopped in his tracks by an aggressive breach flash, and then he falls back anticipating breach to push behind his utility. Breach then uses aftershock to clear out the close corner. After seeing the pattern of the attackers going for aggressive early mid takes, the breach does a tactic called utility dump. This allows him to use multiple abilities in quick succession to prevent a team from pushing out and completely stopping their siege of mid. After backing off to prevent being caught in Breach's abilities, Hiko slowly clears his line of sight on Catwalk and wide swings the corner to catch any defenders pushed up on Catwalk and possibly close mid. He then sees enemy bullet tracers coming from the smoke on Catwalk. Any unsilenced gun will show bullet tracers, such as the Vandal. A great tactic is to try to aim where they're coming from to get a damage on the enemy or possibly kill them through the smoke. Notice how despite Reyna pushing into mid, Hiko doesn't follow her to help her trade the kill. This is because if they both move into mid and look towards arches, they will then be susceptible to a flank from catwalk. If your teammate is pushing and you're still vulnerable from a different angle, don't watch the same area. Make sure to cover their back so that they only have to focus on what's ahead. After Hiko's teammate picks up two frags on Omen and Reyna, Hiko pushes into mid checking all of his corners and begins to focus his attention on market where Reyna previously died. And here we see the strategy we mentioned at the start of this round coming into play. With several players dead, he looks to pick up one of their guns to upgrade from his marshal. After Hiko finds a gun, he and his last two teammates begin clearing tree room. They begin advancing towards A side together to make sure they can trade kills if a fight breaks out. He then tells his team in advance that he plans to entry onto A side by using Raze's satchel charges as an advanced mobility tool. He mentions this to encourage them to follow up his entry and potentially refrag him in the event that he does die. It is notable to point out that throughout this game, Hiko uses Raze's satchel charges in an unconventional way. He uses the satchel charge as a lateral movement tool for both entry and escape throughout this game. Using quick lateral movement like this to his advantage not only makes him a harder target to hit, but it allows him to have the element of surprise when entry fragging onto sites and when pushing people that he has info on. This movement tool serves the same purpose as a jet using a dash, but Hiko uses this because it allows him to have his gun out while dashing throughout the map. Again, answering into a new area Hiko is going to have to clear a ton of angles. To make his life easier, he's going to use one of his abilities, his Boombot, on the far right angle so he can have his main focus on the angles to his left. He then looks to use Satchel to go for a fast, aggressive peek, but is cut down swiftly by Cypher holding an angle behind the boxes. This is such a common mistake players make, even pros. He ends up peeking an enemy far too separated from his teammates, giving Cypher the isolated 1v1 and preventing his own teammates from being able to trade his kill. 
This mistake ends up costing Hiko's team the round. It allows Cypher to be able to take the remaining players in 1v1s and deny being trade killed. Now entering into round 4. Hiko's team is low on credits and he'll need to save. When he opens up the buy menu, he checks his minimum credits for next round and uses that information to optimize his next purchase. He's able to purchase a Marshall and full armor and still have more than 3,900 credits for the next round to be able to buy a rifle and armor. He then peeks Catwalk expecting a defender to be holding it as from experience from previous rounds. Hiko, Reyna, and Sova push up mid to gain control of it. Notice how they're grouping on both sides of the archway, not stacking on top of the same angle. Having attackers on both sides of the archway allows them to set up a crossfire. This way, when they take a gunfight, the enemy will have to deal with two separate angles at once, making trade kills much more likely. After seeing Reyna face herself to safety in the market, Breach is caught out. His team begins further pushing into mid-steps to trap the Breach and collect the first pick to begin ramping up their B execute. Hiko has great game sense in this moment by diligently checking his team's flank. Remember when an entire team is committed to fully pushing an objective at the same time, to always have someone watching a common flank route. This prevents lurkers and defenders from nearby objectives, taking long flank routes and walking up behind your team undetected. Ascent is a map in Valorant that has a very long line of sight in the midsection of the map. The midsection splits the map in half, and in order for a defender to rotate from one bomb site to another, they will have to pass through defender spawn and the opening gateway into midsteps and into market. Hiko knows this and holds the angle to hopefully catch a rotating defender, not expecting him to be there. Unfortunately, his teammates fall as they lose their gunfights and get closed in on in mid. Hiko is now stuck in a 1v4 situation with nothing but a scout. When placed in an alone clutch situation, it can be a stressful task. However, it can be a lot easier if you look to keep one goal in mind. Look for isolated 1v1s. Hiko is able to consistently get these isolated 1v1s by holding close angles, limiting his visibility, and letting the defenders come to him 1v1. He is not trying to wide swing into the open and commit to a gunfight. Instead, he looks to take a shot and then quickly get behind cover. In the end, he almost clutches the round, with Omen living with only two health left. Alright, let's jump ahead in round 6 for the attackers. Hiko and his team have the credits to full buy in round 6. For the first time this game, Hiko has a full auto weapon in the Vandal, and with full utility he had left over from round 5, Hiko allocates the rest of his credits into buying heavy armor. Here he looks to attack a site with Sofa. In this instance, we want to highlight how important information gathering is when attacking in Valorant. First, he uses his Boombot to scout for enemies ahead instead of just dry peeking the corner. Now, with those angles clear by the Boombot, he peeks to gain control of the area. Next, Sova uses his Recon Bolt to scout for enemies and they spot a Cypher. This forces him to activate his smokes and fall back. Shortly after this exchange, we see a super useful tip to clearing out Cypher's wires. Sova uses a Shock Dart to use AoE damage to destroy any trip wires in Archway. Any agents with AoE damage can do this, such as Raze with her satchel or her grenades. The enemy omen puts down a smoke to prevent any fast pushes into A site. Hiko and Sova use this to their advantage by using Sova's drone to again scout out enemies and gain information close by onto A site. Sova is completely vulnerable while using his owl drone and has no control over his character movements while using his drone. Hiko here is being a good teammate and playing a close angle to protect his Sova from a close by defender who could try to push Sova if they find out he is out on his drone. Him and Sova are rewarded for their patience before they push onto A site. Cypher spotted again, and not knowing how many attackers are on the other side of the wall, he fears an immediate push, so he utility dumps his abilities to prevent himself from potentially being rushed. Again, we see the same concept taught earlier. When on attack, you're often having to wait out utility from the enemy and take it slow. This gives defenders from other areas of the map all the time needed to get on the flank and arrive at site. Hiko knows that given how much time he spent on his attack on A, that he should probably turn around and check his flanks just to make sure there's no enemy sneaking up behind him. Sure enough, there it is, and he's rewarded with a kill. Now that they've baited and cleared all of Cypher's utility, it's now time to start a more aggressive push onto A site. Unfortunately, he goes cut down by a lucky pre-fire spray through the Omen smoke. In the end, the defenders are actually able to hold the attack on A site, and so you're probably wondering why we decided to show you this round. Well, this is a great example of playing both attack and defense at a high level. At the start of the round, we saw how the enemy Cypher had to dump all of his utility to stop the push onto A. Hiko did the right thing, playing patiently, baiting out the utility, clearing tripwires, and checking his flank after enough time had passed. Here's the thing though, while Cypher was stalling the push with his abilities, none of Hiko's teammates had pressured the other areas of the map or gained any intel. This led the defenders into thinking that an A push was highly likely given that there was no pressure going down on the other areas of the map, and so they preemptively rotated when Cypher had run out of utility to stack the site and shut down the final push by the attackers. Speaking of which, let's hop over to the other side as Hiko plays round 13 to start off defense. 
He starts off defense by electing to go full utility and light armor with a classic pistol to start the round. Buying utility instead of an upgraded pistol is a smart strategy for defenders. Buying all of an agent's abilities on defense allows them to utility dump to protect themselves from being rushed on sight. It can also be used proactively to slow down an attacker push and trap them in a choke point or specific part of the map. He uses raises grenades at the start of the round into B-side attacker spawn. This prevents an early runout or spawn peak contest of mid. Raze is a great agent for holding choke points on defense. All of Raze's abilities do AoE damage and allow her to put out a lot of burst damage and potentially kill multiple enemies at once. If you listen to the team comms, Hiko makes a great call out that he hears multiple people pushing A long through A side attacker spawn. As he falls back to defend A site, Hiko and Sage coordinate setting up a crossfire on A archway. This crossfire allows them multiple angles to engage potential enemies that could push through the door. He immediately turns around and closes A site door as he focuses his attention on the attackers he hears setting up in a long. A unique aspect to the map ascent in Valorant is the closable doors. In this instance, we can see how the defenders can utilize this handy feature. By Hiko closing the door, he now doesn't have to be worried about being flanked from Catwalk and can focus all of his attention onto A main. He gives a call out for Sage to put up her wall to halt the attacker push as the last of his teammates begin to rotate. I walled off her cat. Hiko, do trying it, his best it, to stop it. a fast push from attackers, utility dumps Raze's abilities on the broken part of the Sage wall. If we look at the minimap, this buys him and Sage a few seconds of time until all their teammates arrive from the rotate. Sage and Hiko manage to successfully stop a fast push from attackers onto A site. After a few seconds have passed and the footsteps die down, their teammate makes a call out that they are about to be pushed on B and their team rotates accordingly. If we take a look at the minimap, we can see that his other teammates are attacking the site from different angles and are not fully in a position to retake the site yet. They are not in ideal spot setups to trade refrags or trade damage if they do come into contact. Hiko realizes this and waits for his teammates to get closer and expose themselves before he decides to make his move. He takes an unexpected route into B by jumping on a stage wall to get an off angle looking into the site hoping to get a free pick. He once again takes full advantage of the fact that the classic pistol is almost completely accurate while right clicking and outduels the sage with movement and three right clicks. Hiko looking to clutch this 1v1 takes the pistol immediately off the ground and begins ship walking to give him an advantage in walking up on the cipher in an attempt to clutch the 1v1. One of the best ways to clutch a 1v1 is to stay as silent as possible. Being completely silent and ship walking allows you to keep the element of surprise, otherwise you'll just be running into the opponent's crosshair. In the end, Hiko did have the element of surprise as he attempted to ambush the Cypher in the back of sight, but he couldn't control his movement or his tap firing, and he ended up losing the duel with the Cypher. Now transitioning into round 15. Starting off the 15th round, Hiko explains that he wants to go full utility, so he ends up buying a Bulldog. Why a Bulldog here? That's what I was saying. I, I, since I got a Ghost, I had to get a Bulldog here, because I want full utility this round. It's pretty important we win this one. Buying a Bulldog not only allowed him to buy all of his utility and heavy armor, but also allowed him to save credits. Saved credits after buying are not only key in keeping a good economy, but also give him insurance that even in the event that he loses the round, he is not completely broke and forced to stay with a classic pistol and no armor or utilities for the next round. Him and his teammate move up A-Long to gain control of the main entry point onto the site. Gaining control of A-Side Archway cuts off the attacker's only way onto site if the tree room door is closed. Hiko and his teammate move into A-Long after pushing the attacker off the long doors after a quick exchange of gunfire. They then round the corner to peek into A-Spawn for any lingering attackers. Upon quick checking their corners and common sight lines, they discover no one. This prompts Hiko to take a free ult orb to bring him closer to his crucial Ray's ultimate. This process of slowly pushing up to and walking through attacker spawn is a concept commonly referred to as roam clearing. Roam clearing is deliberately going through certain areas of the map, clearing them of potential enemies, hiding or slowly pushing. Roam clearing's main purpose is to clear a certain area of the map of lurkers or hidden enemies waiting for unsuspecting defenders to walk past certain areas of the map while rotating. Another main function of roam clearing is intel gathering. If a common area or spawn location is roam cleared and no one is there, you now have valuable info that enemies are not there and are most likely close to or stacking the opposite side of the map and or bombsite. After a quick roam clear and intel gathering of attacker spawn, Sage and Hiko retreat and begin rotating towards B, as that is most likely where the imminent push from the attackers will be. He gets a nice pick on Breach in mid-courtyard while bursting with his bulldog. This is an impact frag as they now have Breach down, which puts the attackers at a crowd control disadvantage, but they also manage to find bomb and its current location. After his team neutralizes the mid push, Hiko instructs his remaining teammates to play zone and let the omen come to them. Playing zone is a tactic when a team on defense has a man advantage on an attacking team. It allows them to play certain angles close to or in a site and forces the enemy to come into their line of sight as they push onto a bomb site. If a zone defense is played correctly, a crossfire would be set up in the event that the attackers attempt to push onto a site and plant. 
a man advantage on defense allows him to retrade kills as attackers take gunfights while trying to entry onto a site. The zone defense works as Omen is seen running out of market and he is dealt with before he could sneak onto B site and plant. Now let's break down an action packed round 18. Hiko has finally afforded a proper full buy round for the first time this defense and he makes the best use of it. Hiko opts for the Phantom, full armor, and full utility on his first full buy round of defense. The Phantom is a great rifle to use on a buy round on defense for several reasons. One of the biggest advantages of the Phantom is that the gun is 30 rounds compared to the 25 of the Vandal. Another advantage is the high fire rate and its manageable recoil pattern that allows for spray downs and spray transfers to allow for a defender to kill multiple attackers as they rush his position. Another unique aspect of the Phantom is that it is silenced, which allows you to shoot through smokes without leaving traces so the enemy can't fire back. Hiko asks his team if he's going to be first contact on site. This means he plans on being the first person to engage any attackers that push through the door. His teammates will stay hidden and shoot from hidden off angles as he draws fire from anyone who walks through the archway. His team is stacking A site and they have three people on A and two teammates in mid and one on B ready to play the quick rotate in the event that an A push does come through. He closes his tree room door behind him as a method of watching his back as he focuses his attention on the imminent A push. A quick fact to note, Hiko has immense pressure on the attacking team with his raise ult being available. The attacking team must respect the fact that they could be walking into a trap with not only multiple ults that could be thrown their way upon entry, but they also don't want to run the risk of being team wiped by a lucky raise ult. He immediately pops his raise ult once he gets breach ulted as a form of self defense in the event he gets swung on while still being stunned. This is a smart game sense play as Hiko uses psychological warfare on the enemy team by popping raise ult to make the attackers think twice before fast rushing a site arch behind the breach ult. His team had several ults ready for an imminent push. In the span of a few seconds, Ray's ult, Breach ult, and Silva ult were all used in quick succession to completely halt the attacker's push in their tracks. Silva's ult managed to pick up two crucial kills, and the rest of the team managed to kill the remaining attackers as they were now pinned in A-long. If you look at the minimap, you can see a proactive play being made by Hiko's teammates. Knowing that Silva's ult picked up two initial kills, Silva and Brim move into mid to prevent a rotate escape from the attackers. The rest of the attackers are pinned in A-Long and Hiko's team pushes A-Long to clean up the rest of the kills as they swiftly end the round. Now let's phase into a crucial round 22. Hiko goes with the operator the past few rounds as it allows him to have maximum efficiency while holding mid and attacker spawn. He does not have to expose himself as much while taking precise shots into attacker spawn while using the operator. This allows him to have a tight angle on catwalk and the ability to engage anyone that tries to swing the corner. On defense, the operator is a fantastic tool for completely shutting down key angles for the attacking team. Hiko has great situational awareness. As the omen uses his ult, he turns around to see if the omen teleported close. He listens for the audio cue and discovers that omen teleported into a smoke that recently went down close by. He manages to pick up an impact frag by taking out the omen early in a round just by paying attention to his surroundings. He ends up utility dumping Raze's abilities as he hears multiple people trying to rush into A side from A long. He successfully manages to stop the attackers from rushing with his abilities, and this allows his teammates to support him at the door and pick up frags on the attackers as they swiftly close out the round. The attackers gambled on the last round by trying to make fast, aggressive plays, but because of situational awareness and liberal use of utility by his team, they swiftly stop the attackers and win the game. So what do you guys think of the new map ascent? Are you liking it or dreading it when it comes up in the queue? Let us know in the comments section down below. And while you're down there, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides like this one designed to help you with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching. This is Sergeant Frost, and remember, winter is coming.